Repurposing Family Clan Organizations in Times of Crisis, Part 3, the Family Clan Federation. Hello, Frere Clan members, C Clan members, and hello to our YouTube viewers that are interested in genealogy, family clan history, and management. I'm Joel C. Serrata Ferrer, and in this video, I'd like to share with you some thoughts and ideas that I have about how family clan federations can help you repurpose, reinvent, and revitalize your individual family clan organizations. Now, what you're looking at right now is the website of the SFCCA, or the Singapore Federation of Chinese Clan Associations. Uh, last year, I did a, a video about this federation, and I pointed out that uh, many of the uh, 230 family clan organizations that uh, are with the SFCCA started out in the 1800s, and, and many of uh, their, their, their members, initial members, were uh, blue-collar workers, coolies, okay? Uh, hard up blue collar workers from mainland China and went to Singapore to seek greener pastures. But unfortunately, uh, life was not that easy. Uh, their British colonizers uh, treated them badly, and then they also had some problems way back in mainland China. So they had no choice but to support themselves through their family plans. Uh, luckily, they were able to uh, not only survive but thrive and also contribute to the development of Singapore. So that was one crisis that they faced, okay? Or probably the first crisis the family clans faced uh, way back in the 1800s. But there was another crisis that they faced. This happened uh, probably during the period of 1960s all the way to the 1990s. Uh, it was during this time where you had the rise of the four Asian tigers, uh, Hong Kong, South Korea, Taiwan, and of course, Singapore. I might say, crisis? How could that be a crisis? I mean, it, it, it's a great time to be in Singapore. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the economy was booming. But you have to remember, one of the reasons that uh, led to the formation of these Chinese clans was mutual support so that they can get welfare, okay, that uh, the British colonial government did, didn't provide them at that time. But now that Singapore was a, a very good economical state, uh, the state already provided them the, the welfare benefits. So there was no need for the family clan to do this. Worse, their young kids were a lot more westernized. So they didn't care about Chinese culture compared to, you know, the, the older folk uh, of the clan. So crisis, once again, right? Membership was on a decline. So what did these Chinese clans do? How did they repurpose themselves? In 1985, they decided to join forces in order to form the SFCCA, right? Now, one of, one of the complaints that I hear young people, why they don't want to participate in clan events is because, oh, family clan events, it's just a bunch of old people who talk about old things and they talk in an old way, <laughs> in an old fashioned manner. Uh, well, we're young people, we don't, uh, we don't want to get involved in that. So check out the site, look at this site. Do you see some old people here? <laughs> yeah, do you see some uh, activities here for old folks? Okay, let's try to look for some old people. Oh, there! There are the old people, but for most of the site, it's all about young people, right? Young people is the future of the clan and the future of the nation, and our future in general is in the hands of young people. So this is how you repurpose your clan. This is how you reinvent yourself to make yourself relevant to millennials. You will get this from this site. So Ferrer clan members, C clan members, let's try to visit this site. Let's learn from them. There are a lot of cool stuff that we could pick up from the SFCCA. And like I said, that's 230 different family clans. Several of them have websites that we could visit and study. Okay? Now, from this federation, let's jump to a federation which is closer to home. And when I say closer to home, I'm talking about my mom's Chinese clan. This. Okay. So what's the difference between this Chinese clan association or federation, if you want to use that word, and this one? Well, here you have some Chinese clan associations uh, that have different surnames. Uh, and the common denominator is they happen to be in Singapore. On the other hand, this Chinese clan association uh, has member organizations that all bear the name, same surname, which is Xue. Now, in a, a video that I did about my Xue ancestry, where I asked the question, am I a 69th 
descendant of the Shue root clan from uh, Shandong, right? I mentioned that uh, it's in the ancient state of Shue that was, I think, established in 2021 BC, where uh, yeah, most of the, the, the Shue's come from. But because of migratory patterns, they went to different parts of China, right? Now, what this uh, federation did was they tried to get in touch with di these different uh, Shue clan groups in order to form this super group of Shue's bearing the name, uh, bearing the surname of Shue. So let's check out their English name. Uh, it says here Chinese surname Shue Zhongqin Association. Okay, Chinese surname, the surname is Shue. It's this one, it's this character. Uh, Zhong is the first character in the Mandarin uh, word for China, Zhongguo, right? So Chong is Chinese, Qin is uh, Mandarin for relative, Qin, Qin Qi, Zhongguo, Qin Qi, Chinese relative. Uh, you'll see Chong again here in the Chinese name of the association. So this is Chong, this is Chonghua. Um, in one of the videos that I did where I compared the Ferrer clan and the Si clan, I mentioned that in Iligan, the name of the Chinese school there is Lanao Chonghua. So it's the same character, Chonghua. In Manila, we have what is known as the, the Pasai Chonghua School, right? So Hua stands for culture or civilization. So when you say Chonghua, it means Chinese culture, Chinese civilization. Xue, Xue, Xue is the family name. Okay, so let's... Uh, Try to check out what this site is all about and translate it into English. There. Introduction. So you can pick up a lot of uh, nice ideas of uh, how to structure your family plan uh, organization or federation if you want to form a federation from this site. So says here, the Chinese Shue Family Association is a worldwide nonprofit social organization uh, formed by people from all walks of life, enterprises, and institutions who emphasize ethnic, family, nostalgia, and enthusiastic Shue family friendship. A purpose here. Clan culture research, clan activities, family and country history, education, and Chinese civilization inheritance. So this is what you're gonna see in the site. There are news about uh, clan culture research that they have done in, in different cities, uh, clan activities, they have some field trips, uh, they also have some uh, educational trips, uh, and uh, there's a celebration of different uh, relatives that, that have uh, 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 achieve certain accomplishments. Okay, so in this area, you will see the different uh, Shue organizations based on their geographic location in China. And let's try to check out a news article about my mom's uh, root ancestral clan. If you remember, I also did a video where I mentioned that I'm a 19th generation descendant of the Xue clan from uh, Jinmen, Taiwan. Because the uh, Si clan of Iligan and Kagyan de Oro traces its lineage from the Jinmen group. So here it is, the Jinmen group. Uh, so in this news article, it says that they donated genealogical material to Shaman University. And there's a picture of them organizing a delegation to worship there ancestors. Okay, so ancestral worship is, is one of the activities of this uh, Chinese plan. And uh, if we go to the organization here, you will see here that uh, you know, this particular commission is involved in the uh, building of ancestral temples. Okay, so this is for ancestral temples. This one is for uh, the editing a production of the Shue clan book. This is another publication commission that is involved in, uh, you know, uh, lesser publications like magazines, quarterly reports. And then uh, this one is all about the dreams, aspirations of the Shue, this commission. 
And uh, of course, how could you not include business? So there's also business here. For a better elaboration of the uh, business commission or components, you have this. You have a chamber of commerce, okay? So just in case you want to establish chamber of commerce for your particular family clan association, here, there are some suggestions. Okay. So, uh, let's see what else can we learn from this site. Uh, any other membership form? Here, they have their articles of incorporation. So, if you want to develop your own articles of incorporation for your family clan, you could get ideas from this site. Okay. And, uh, yeah, some ideas about organization. What else? Oh, speaking of organization, if you go here, oh, sorry, it's uh, in this part, I think. Ah, yeah, right, it's here. Okay, um, for our clan members, if you, if you remember in, in our particular family clan, uh, we trace, all of the living Ferreras trace their lineage to the eight branches of our clan, right? So here, we also have eight geographical regions uh, of the Shue clan in China. So the Roots clan from Shandong is part of this county. The Shandong County, so that includes Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, and Shandong. Now, if you want to see the uh, the county uh, where my mom's uh, ancestral clan belongs to, you will see it here. Uh, it forms part of the Haidong County, okay? so that includes Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. So, the Jinmen Group is in the Taiwan Group. Okay, so. What other benefit can you get from a, a, a federation of family clans? Check this out. This is one big benefit. Can you imagine how many members does this federation have? Eight million. <laughs> Could you imagine the kind of projects that you can do with eight million family members? It's quite a lot. Fair Clan members, what do you think? What if we form a Fair Clan Federation, you know? Because right now we're just one clan. What if we create a Fair Clan Federation and we join forces with, say, the Fair Clan of Iloilo or maybe the Fair Clan of, uh, of Cavite? Oh, let's not forget the various Fair Clans in Pangasinan that we're not related to, but the Bear the surname for there. What do you think? Do you think we'll reach 8 million? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon in our next clan video.